Yasmin, there is no silver bullet to achieving a sustainable future for commercial aviation, but it's going to happen one way or another. Aircraft manufacturer Boeing is focusing on sustainability with a suite of capabilities across its business unit. And to talk more on the subject, we're joined by Robert Boyd, Asia-Pacific Regional Sustainability Lead at Boeing. Robert, good to have you with us. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Talk us more about Boeing's sustainability targets for 2024. Sure. Um, sustainability is a key focus uh, for, for Boeing in everything uh, that we do. We have internal targets in, in how we uh, manufacture. So that's uh, net zero, and we're, we're already there. So that's, that's good news. We have targets for 2030 to be 100% renewable electricity. We're on track for that. But probably the biggest uh, target, if you call it that, that we work towards advancing is net zero 20 by 2050, and that's the whole aerospace target of getting to net zero emissions. And that's going to take everything, fleet renewal, operations efficiency, new energy, and then even uh, new aircraft. But we put a lot of emphasis on the new energy, and that's sustainable aviation fuel. Okay. So you've also launched an initiative to advance sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF, uh, among the APAC economies. Uh, how's progress on that? Good. I mean, we have been working on this in a global sense uh, now for nearly 15 years from testing to development, and we're moving into a phase which uh, we're working uh, even more closely, I would say, with policy makers. And it's the policy element that's really going to drive and accelerate the uptake of SAF. We've seen that in Singapore uh, this week with, with SAF policy being a, a key feature. So we're going to continue to work uh, on that with, with policy and see greater SAF, uh, SAF development. Do you see other Asian economies also seeing the urgency as Singapore does? I think Singapore's stood up as a leader uh, here, but I suspect, uh, well, we see definitely see good progress from the entire region, but I wouldn't be surprised to see more activity uh, in this region over coming years for sure. What else are you doing in terms of uh, promoting SAF, I mean, working with governments, uh, senior bodies? Working with governments, partnerships is a big uh, big focus for us. No one can do this, you know, uh, alone. It, it requires, I always call it the four key stakeholders uh, have to get together. That's the aerospace industry, the um, the finance community, um, the, uh, the, uh, the aerospace uh, fi finance, the energy sector, and then the policy makers. And then you've got the, the right stakeholders at the table to actually make the decisions that uh, need to progress this. So we work with all. One I'd highlight in this region is we're working with RSB, which is a sustainability organisation, on really understanding the feedstock potential. Because feedstock's the new oil, in a sense. If you know what feedstock you've got, you know what uh, volumes you can develop when it comes to sustainable aviation fuel. And talking about volumes, I mean, we're not seeing even the levels that are needed towards net zero by 2050. And, and SAF right now is three to five times more expensive than traditional jet fuel. Are prices going to come down towards commercialization? The prices will come down. Uh, how, you know, to what degree that, that occurs, we have to just keep working uh, on that. Prices have been coming down uh, as well. SAF is not brand new today. SAF has been, you know, SAF, we did our first test flight in 2008 uh, with SAF. So what are we, 16 years into the journey? It's certainly become a very popular topic in the, in the past couple of years, but we are on a, on a journey. There, there is uh, significant progress in the amount of volume being developed. Again, it may seem small relative to where we need to get to, but if we were to do this, have this discussion two or three years ago, um, what we have today would seem like a giant leap. What about encouraging fleet renewals and visualise for us the next generation aircraft? What will they look like in the skies? Well, t t two things there. So fleet renewal is the, is the easiest thing that can get instant gains when it comes to CO2. So a new aircraft today, you know, if it's a 787, it will deliver about a 25% CO2 improvement relative, relative to its predecessor. So that can happen today. If you're operating an old aircraft, it can become a new one. The more innovative ones that we're not seeing in the sky yet, that we're developing, so one I'd refer to as the uh, transonic truss brace wing. So that looks a little bit different. So if you think of the wings sitting on top of the fuselage with a strut to sort of hold that in place, I'm giving you very non-scientific terms, but that's what it will look like. And the aerodynamic improvement that we see, we believe we can get from that could be up to 30%. So that's going into a testing phase. We're working with NASA uh, on, on that. Uh, we'll, we'll have those in the sky, in, or at least a prototype in the sky in 2028. So we need to make sure that we can get the efficiency improvement we believe 
uh, can happen. So right now that's a retrofit from a, an MD-90 uh, aircraft, um, and it, but it looks as it, as it will look. And it'll be able to be used within any airport infrastructure in place currently? Yes, that would, that would be uh, compatible with, with traditional airport infrastructure uh, t today. Yeah. How soon before any of your Boeing aircrafts goes 100% SAF? Well, by 2030, we've made a commitment to, uh, for all of our, our aircraft to be 100% SAF compatible. So that's, that's very important because we are unlikely to see 100% SAF volumes in the 2030s. But at some stage in the life of an aircraft bought in 2030, it will get up towards those higher levels. So that's why we're committed to making sure that we're 100% SAF compatible if you buy an aircraft in 2030. At the Singapore Air Show, you're demonstrating also your Cascade climate impact model. Uh, what does the data modeling tool, tool work in terms of providing data on emissions? It's, it's essentially a huge database of information that becomes very usable uh, to understand all of the potential scenarios to get from where we are today to net zero. Uh, so that uh, can look at all the things I mentioned, fleet renewal, um, all the energy sources from hydrogen, electric, uh, the, the quality of the grid. Some, some electricity grids are green, some aren't green. And that has a big impact on what decisions you might make in terms of new uh, types of aircraft. We look at SAF in terms of all the different SAF uh, improvements you can have. So really, it's a, it's a tool for, for everybody. It's public, it's on the internet, anyone can use it. But I think it's especially valuable for those trying to d design effective policy. And it's also extremely valuable for airlines in their own journey to net zero. On the, on the workforce front as well, you're participating at the AirShow's Aero Campus. Uh, that's to attract next generation aerospace engineers and leaders. Uh, how else do you think the shortage in the workforce can be filled up? Well, I think by, by providing uh, jobs that people uh, are attracted to, and sustainability is certainly one of those areas that we see uh, a lot of people very interested in joining sustainability initiatives uh, within all industries, but I'm certainly seeing it within Boeing because there's such a diversity of different areas that you can get involved in, uh, as you say, from engineering through to pure uh, you know, sustainability, emissions policy. Uh, it is attractive for people to uh, start working in. Sustainability is crucial, of course, but of course safety is key. Yes. Uh, and of course with Boeing under scrutiny because of the uh, mid-air blowout of the air plug uh, at uh, Alaskan Airlines, obviously safety comes first. Indeed, safety, safety is always number one. It's the core priority uh, in aerospace, core priority for Boeing. Uh, when it comes to things like sustainable aviation fuel, we've been working on you know, the testing, the development, the certification for more than 15 years and actually led the way, to be honest, in, in much of that. Uh, and certainly in that, that space, which I'm very familiar with and, and what we do there in a technical sense, uh, it's, it's world leading, world class and absolutely 100% drop in fuel uh, equivalent to Jet A1 kerosene. Robert, very good. Thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Been a pleasure. Thank you.